Hi everyone, in this video of Accelerated Chess Dragon, we're going to be looking at another chess opening, and this is the Sicilian defense, the Meroxi bind, and specifically the setup with 7 bishop e2, bishop e3, and then finally queen to d2. So, uh, this is the main variation of the Meroxi bind, and we're going to be looking at a couple of other variations where uh, white also will play bishop e2 in another uh, video that I will make, and also there are going to be seventh move sidelines, including the moves bishop to e3, f3, and knight c2. So let's begin. White starts off by playing the move e4, and black will go c5. Uh, white will go knight f3, and now g6 by black. d4, and now c takes d4. So knight takes d4, and knight c6. And in the accelerated dragon, where I covered uh, in the channel previously, you know that usually white will play moves like bishop e3, maybe knight c3, but c4 is played here and it is the Maroc c bind. And after c4 is played, the main idea is to gain a very strong grip towards the d5 square. And followed up with moves like b3 and f3, white is going to have a massive pawn chain on the light squares and it's going to be very dominating for white. There are some cons to that, one being that white's light squared bishop is going to be finding itself very hard to develop but usually the position usually compensates for itself so knight f6 is played here by black attacking the e4 pawn and now white goes knight c3 defending and d6 by black and here this is what i was mentioning uh the main move is bishop e2 but sidelines may include bishop to e3 f3 and knight c2 and we're looking at that in a couple of videos in the future. So bishop e2 is played by white. And now black takes on d4, trading the knights. And bishop g7. And here white plays the move bishop e3. And you might think that it's best to move the queen just for safety. But really you don't need to. Because black doesn't have an adequate discovery that actually puts white in danger. If black wants to make a discovery with the knight, the best place he can go to is h5. But what is the knight doing on h5? Absolutely nothing. So you don't have a very good discovery as black, meaning that white should not be fearing the knight moving. After bishop e3 castles, now only you should be afraid, because first of all the bishop is defended, meaning that the knight can go and do something else. And that something else that the knight is going to be doing is going to g4, and attacking this e3 bishop, assuming that white doesn't acknowledge the threat. And after knight g4, the bishop on e3 is hit, and black is essentially going to trade his okay knight for white's good bishop. And if you think about it, white is going to be left with a terrible bishop, whereas black will be left with two awesome bishops. So you just have to think about that and understand why now it's a good time to play queen d2. And now black develops with bishop to e6, putting pressure on the c4. And white has two moves, rook c1 and castles. Rook c1 is the more basic of the two moves, and we're going to be looking at that first. If rook c1 is played, then black will go queen a5, developing the queen, and also challenging this queen on d2, in case this knight on c3 ever moves. So here, white goes f3, reinforcing e4, and now rook fc8. And here is the structure I was talking about, b3. Almost all of white's pawns are on light squares, and they're mainly going to be aiding the control of this d5 uh, square, and mainly this knight coming to d5 is the major idea. So here, black will go a6, and white has one of three moves to choose from. Either a4, knight to d5, or knight to a4. Uh, knight to d5 is the most basic of the three moves, and if this is played, then black takes on d2, white takes with the king, knight takes d5. More trades occur. c takes d5, and now bishop to d7. And here it's just full out major piece exchanges. So rook takes c8 check, rook takes c8, and now rook c1. Offering more trades, and black takes white up on that. And here, basically the best idea is to go king to f8, and then play e6. And essentially, you want to break this very strong grip that white has towards black's entire position. And that's the best idea you should try. Other alternative ideas could be maybe b5, uh, a5, and then b4 and a4. Or at least trying to activate this bishop perhaps uh, this way. Maybe you could go bishop c3 and then somehow find your way 
into White's territory. But knight d5 is not the only move that White can play. You could also go knight a4, and this would result in queen takes d2 check, king takes d2, and now knight d7, as knight b6 was being threatened. And white goes g4 here, uh, and the main idea is to try controlling more space in the king side. And now black has two moves to choose from, f5 or rook c6. Uh, if rook c6 is played, then just h3, reinforcing g4, rook a c8, f4 is played by white, and the obvious idea is to try playing f5 and trap the bishop. So black is just in time to go knight c5. And knight c5 is pretty useful because it tries to either get rid of that somewhat bad knight on the d7 square. And yes, it does trade it off for an even worse knight on a4, but it does give black the open d file. If you compared it to previous positions, you saw that black didn't have any open file. So the d file is the step in the right direction. So e5 would be played by white, and the major idea is to try preventing the dark squared bishop from getting any scope. But now black goes f6, and uh, simply, his idea is to either let white take on f6, and then you activate your bishop after bishop takes f6, or uh, white doesn't do anything, and then you take on e5. Uh, so that would just be the idea if rook c6 is played. Rook c6 is not mandatory, however. You could also go f5, and this would result in e takes f5, g takes f5, and now h3. Yet again, solidifying the g4 pawn. Rook f8 is played here, and now f4. And black is not going to take on g4. Instead, rook a d8. Taking on g4 would only give white an advantage, uh, because if you were to take on g4, after f takes g4, then h takes g4, and now white gets more space. And maybe he can even activate this bishop on e2, which for most of the game was just sitting back and not really doing anything. So fg4 simply doesn't work. You must play rook a d8, g5 by white. And this is trying to control more space, and maybe signal that white is trying to get an attack started on the king's side. Uh, yes, there are no queens on the board, but an attack can still function without queens on the board. So, knight c5 is played by black, and the idea is that if you take with either the bishop or the knight, it doesn't matter, uh, d takes c5, and there's a check towards the king. So knight c3, and now black finds a way to trade uh, the knight for the knight on c3, and uh, it's knight e4 check. So the knights are traded off, otherwise you would just lose material, so uh, now bishop g4. And the obvious idea is that white either wants black to take on g4, and then obviously your h file is completely open, and you have ideas of expanding with f5, or after h takes g4, you simply get rid of black's powerful bishop, and that would just be a very good thing for white to do, because not only does he trade his bad bishop off for black's good bishop, but it could also uh, favor white later on in positions where, where it could even be the attack that matters, like rook h2 and rook ch1. Then white uh, is really getting the initiative and black is really in trouble. So, bishop f5. And what is bishop f5 trying to do? Well, it wants to trade bishops but it wants to do it on black's terms. Black wants to trade the bishops in such a way that it would only help activate his pieces, not white's. So, after bishop f5, black's following ideas could be e5, uh, trying to attack f4 in some cases, uh, and even if bishop takes f5, rook takes f5, d5 is also an idea, b5 is an idea, many pawn breaks are available, and black has so many to choose from. So, after bishop f5, it would really be black who is favored, uh, because white only hopes to play the move bishop g4, trying to at least open the h-file up. So, black keeping it closed is definitely a good thing. Uh, now, knight a4 and knight d5 are two moves that can be played, but the third move that is also an option is a4. Uh, and if a4 is played, then black goes knight d7. Um, just retreating the knight, but it has ideas of bringing it up to c5, uh, you know, the b3 pawn is always very weak. So, knight d5. Now, queen takes d2 check, king takes d2, bishop takes d5, e takes d5, and now a5, which tries to control the b4 square in case this pawn ever tries to advance there. The bishop comes to d3, and now rook to e8. So, 
Now you have ideas of playing e6 and getting rid of this very strong grip. So now after rook e1, uh, knight c5 is played. And knight c5 is obviously trying to attack the b3 pawn. And if you play bishop takes c5, it wouldn't really do anything for black or white. Because after d takes c5, you still keep a bad bishop on the d3 square. So it would really just favor black in the case. So bishop c2, defending b3, and now e6. So trying to get that pawn break in. Uh, d takes e6, rook takes e6. And, um, well, after this, black has many ideas, mainly revolving around rook e8 and trying to uh, use the e-file to their advantage. And um, the e-file is perhaps the place where the fight is mainly going to be on, because black cannot control any other open file, since there isn't really any. And the e-file is basically going to be where most of the action is. So, uh, that was the move rook c1. The other option to play is actually to just castle, and this is the main variation. Here, black will go queen to a5. It's a similar variation to what we just saw when white goes rook c1. After queen a5, white has four moves to choose from. f3, rook ab1, rook fc1, and rook ac1. And we're first going to be looking at the move rook fc1, and if rook fc1, then rook fc8. All of these moves have rook fc8 as the following move for black. After rook fc8, b3 will be played by white, and now knight g4 by black. Uh, and here you might be wondering, why do you have to give up the knight for the bad bishop? Well, it's because even if bishop takes g4 and bishop takes g4 is played, now black has potential of getting an attack uh, with something like queen h5, bishop e5 later on in the game. And also... It's because these two bishops are very powerful bishops, so it doesn't matter at all about the rest of the pieces. Uh, this bishop pair is basically controlling most of the board. And this could be mainly equal, but I see this as black being slightly better. So, bishop d4 and bishop d7. Retreating the bishop um, instead of taking on d4, which is probably the better idea, although I would instead retreat the bishop to e6 instead of d7. So bishop d7 is played, bishop takes g7, king takes g7, and queen d4 check. Uh, checking the king, and after something like f6 is played, followed by e5, uh, black does get a very strong counter grip that tries to counter white's uh, control of the d5 square. Because it's no doubt that this knight is going to jump into the d5 square. So the least that black can do is to try getting some sort of counterplay in the form of an outpost some way or another. So, uh, that was rook fc1. Another move you could try is rook ac1. And still, rook fc8, b3, and now a6. And here, there are two moves to choose from. Either f3 or f4. If f3 is played, then there's b5, c takes b5, and now a takes b5. Uh, instead of c takes b5, you could also go knight d5. And after a trade of queens, knight takes d5, e takes d5. You check on d4, activate that bishop, and now king h1, bishop d7. Now, why do you do this? Well, because the bishop now has more scope than it did on the g7 square. Now it's controlling an additional diagonal, which is g1, a7, rather than just h8, a1. So that is really an improvement for black. Uh, instead of going knight d5, c takes b5 is also able to be played. But after a takes b5, you should not recapture the b5 pawn. And there's a specific reason. If knight takes b5, then you take on d2, and let's say you take on c8, there could just be bishop c8, there could even be rook c8, it doesn't actually matter that much. But let's say rook c8. Bishop takes d2, now there's rook c2. And in any case, you're just going to win the a2 pawn back. And if you're going to ask me who this favors, I would say it favors black. Because black now has an active rook, uh, and this knight maybe could be transferred to the c5 square or even e5. And really, black has the advantage because uh, he's kind of tying white's rook down a bit. So, let's say you try to defend with rook d1 because that's really the only way of defending. Otherwise, you lose this bishop or you lose this bishop on e2. So, rook d1. Now, after rook takes a2, uh, now this is getting a bit uncomfortable for white because now you have to be a very passive player due to 
uh, first of all, this bishop being attacked, but also because uh, if you move this bishop, then this bishop will indirectly be attacked as well. So let's say knight c3, uh, rook b2, bishop c4. Now, you obviously see how black is using his active pieces, whereas white, uh, it's not really easy to see how. Like just knight d7 for black and, you know, now there are threats like rook takes d2 and if rook takes d2, bishop takes c3. And you see how black starts using all of his pieces in harmony. So that is why it's not the best idea to take with the knight. But taking with the bishop is even worse. Because if you capture with the bishop, I encourage you to pause the video here and try finding out how black can just win the game on this spot. Okay, so black can just play the move rook takes c3, and it doesn't exactly win the game on the spot, but it gives black a significant advantage, and white can never recover from this, because rook takes c3 or queen takes c3, regardless of what white does, there's just queen takes b5. And yes, white does have a rook and a pawn for the two pieces, but considering how white's pieces are at the moment playing, you can only assume that they're not really going to be doing as much in the future. Because uh, how do you really use this rook and extra pawn efficiently? There's not really a way. So black would get the advantage, and uh, you have a, a variety of ways to continue, like knight d7, uh, knight c5 later on. And black just has no way of being stopped now. So you cannot capture the pawn on b5 with the bishop or the knight. So that was the move f3. F4 is the other option, and this would result in b5 by black, and now f5 by white. Bishop d7, and here is where the real tactical fun begins. White can choose between playing either b4 or f takes g6. Now, if b4 is played, then there is just queen takes b4. And it seems like maybe white just gave up a pot, but white has a bit of a deeper reasoning to why he actually played the move b4. e5 is played now. And after e5, we have the move d takes d5. You might be thinking, why is white just giving up pawns here and there? Well now, f takes g6. And unfortunately for black, this is a pawn that he cannot capture. And it's because if you capture, regardless of which pawn you capture it with, let's say h takes, there's rook takes f6. And after e takes f6 is played by black, white can simply go queen takes d7. And if you've noticed the material, there is a knight and a bishop playing against a rook and a couple of pawns, yes. But I would assume that because of white's activity, he has a lot more possibilities than black does. So... Uh, hg6 or fg6, doesn't matter which way you capture, you lose the knight and then you lose the bishop. So, bishop e6 is played. But now, white is forced to play gf7 or gh7. So g takes f7 check, bishop takes f7, and now the move bishop h6. And after bishop h6 is played, uh, the obvious idea is to try trading off that dark squared bishop for black's dark squared bishop, because usually the bishop on g7 is known as the defender of the king side, and it protects black in case of any king side attacks that white ever gets. So, with white trying to eliminate that bishop, that is obviously a step in the right direction. However, it doesn't work in white's favor. Bishop takes h6, queen takes h6, and now what does black play amidst the entire attack piling up on him? That's right, bishop c4. Now you might be wondering why is bishop c4 being played? You're being attacked from the king side, your g file is completely open, and yet you decide to go pawn grabbing. Now, why does this work? Well, because white doesn't exactly have a concrete way of actually punishing you. So white will go queen g5, king h8, and now what white seems to do will mainly trick up many players. Rook takes f6. And the problem with this is that many people immediately think that they're lost because of some powerful move that white played. But actually, white is bluffing. This move is not strong whatsoever, and it's because of precise calculation. Here, black 
Of course, if he takes the rook, then it'll be a perpetual check with queen takes f6 check, and then you keep on checking the king, you bring the rook to f1 if the king ever goes to the f file. But there's a problem with rook f6. And black can call white's bluff by playing the simple rook g8. And after rook g8, white is not going to win the game anymore. Because now you're attacking the rook on f6, the rook on f6 cannot block and defend the queen in any way, because rook g6 would obviously lose the rook. And now you've included another defender, so now you can actually defend the position against any attacks. So, queen takes e5, e takes f6, queen takes f6 check, and now rook g7. Black managed to defend, and now white is just down the exchange with absolutely nothing as compensation. And it's really important to know why you have to calculate variations precisely. Because if you were white and you just saw rook takes f6, you might be thinking that all of a sudden you're lost because white just played a seemingly powerful move. That's not the case. You have to actually calculate precisely and see whether or not this move actually works. And if black didn't see the move rook g8, then yes, black would definitely have lost the game. So it's important to see that, and after all of this, now black is the one who's up the exchange and is actually winning. So you have to be aware of all of this. Now, instead of going b4, you could also go f takes g6, which tries to incorporate a similar idea. So black will take with the h pawn, and now e5 by white. Same idea. You're trying to force d takes e5, and then rook takes f6, and you win the bishop on d7. But... Unfortunately for black, you do not have that exact same luxury of defending the position like you did in the previous variation. So, what does black do? Black goes b4. Now, he's counterattacking the attack towards his knight on s6 by attacking white's knight on c3. And, now if you move the knight somewhere, let's say to b1, you lose the e5 pawn via the queen. So, Black can actually defend the position and is not exactly lost. So, e takes f6, white takes black's knight, b takes c3, black takes white's knight, and now rook takes c3. Queen takes c3 would just trade more pieces off the board, and it would really just favor black. Uh, black just has more active bishops. So, rook takes c3. Now bishop takes f6. And you might be thinking now that white must trade the rooks after rook c2 or rook d3 or moving the rook to c1 even. So, what does white do here? White tries to now attack the position, and he sacrifices the exchange yet again. e takes f6, bishop f3, attacking the rook on a8, and now bishop c6. And white completely disregards the attack towards the bishop on f3, and goes bishop d4. Bishop f3, and now queen f4. And what is white trying to threaten? Queen takes f6. And at this position, many people might be a bit worried because they're getting attacked. But you actually have to give up the light squared bishop in order to survive here. So what is black in a play? I encourage you to pause the video and find it out. Okay, so black will actually go queen g5. And the simple idea is that you defend the f6 pawn and uh, if you capture on g5, then after f takes g5, the queens are off the board. And it's an easy way for white to lose the game. Black can just use this extra exchange on the e-file, and it's simply over for white. So, you cannot trade queens. And this means that what white has to do is he has to take the f3 bishop. So, that's what white does. But, now there's the option of playing the move rook to e8. And after rook to e8... Black has managed to obtain the open e-file, and it's going to be now in black's advantage. So, queen takes f6. White tries to trade the queens off, although that doesn't exactly work. Rook e1 check. The king goes to f2, and now black trades the queens, and yes, it works, because now rook a e8 is played. And here you might be wondering, did black just blunder? Because now white can go rook h3, and there seems to be the threat of checkmate here on h8. However, this does not work. And that's because black can go rook 8 to e2 check. King goes to f3 or g3, it doesn't matter. Rook e3 check. 
It doesn't matter now where the king goes to, just rook takes h3. You can either have a damaged pawn structure, or you could lose a pawn. That's it for white. He has no chance anymore. So that was the move rook a to c1. Now, you could also go rook a to b1. If rook a to b1 is played, then there's rook fc8. Black threatens the c4 pawn. Now, white has three moves to choose from. Rook fc1, b4, or b3. So, if b4 is played, then you just simply go queen d8. And now c4 is now a target, and it's going to be a very easy one to hit. So, what about the move b3? Well, if b3 is played, then knight g4. You try to go for the e3 bishop, and yes, you might be wondering what happens if bishop g4. But, the problem is the c3 knight is also under attack. So that's another thing to consider. So bishop d4 instead. You guard both the c3 knight and you defend the bishop on e3 from being captured. Now, bishop d4 wasn't the only option. Knight d5 was also playable. If knight d5, you could trade the queens off, play king f8, so defend the e7 pawn, and now bishop g5. And here, black will just take on d5. So eliminate that knight, and e takes d5. Bishop takes g4 will just run into bishop e6, so you do not win any material as white. So e takes d5. Knight goes back to f6, and the position is equal. There's absolutely nothing that can be tried here. Bishop d4. If this is played, then black trades the bishops and goes queen c5. Trying to trade the queens off and maybe either get this rook into the game or play d takes c5 and you get control over the d4 square. Queen d3 will be played and now knight f6. So retreating the knight back as it did its job on g4. And now king h1. Getting ready to play the move f4 and getting out of this diagonal pin. A5 is played, and now F4. The bishop goes to D7, and now A4. So it seems like white is trying to get a grip towards the B5 square, but that's not exactly the case. Instead, white jumps the knight to D5, and after rook E8, rook BD1. You might be wondering why doesn't white take on F6, and that's actually because after knight takes F6 check, E takes F6, now E4 is a weakness. Of course you can defend it, I'm not saying you can't, but now it just becomes a target for black for the remainder of the game. And it's going to be an easy one to attack after simply rook a d8. And uh, this is going to either be tied down and uh, black can easily get activity. Because black doesn't have such weaknesses. d6 might seem weak, but it's not actually that weak compared to e4. So, knight f6 doesn't work. Rook bd1. And now after rook a d8, it's the same idea. If you take on f6, then just e4 is weak. And if you don't take, then the simple idea is to try going for the move knight d7. Uh, you could go e6 and kick the knight away. That's mainly one idea. Uh, you could also try eliminating the knight immediately because it is a very strong piece on d5. So that should be the best idea that black could try. Now, uh... Instead of going b3 or b4, you could also go rook fc1. If rook fc1, then black takes on c4. You might be wondering, why didn't white just give up the c4 pawn? Well, give up isn't exactly the best word. It's instead traded off for the e7 pawn. So knight d5, and now queen takes d2 check, knight takes e 7 check. You might be thinking, how does this exactly work when your knight is going to be attacked and won by black. Well, because not only is white's knight hit, but so is black's bishop. So after bishop takes d2, king takes c7, because if you capture on e2, then the rook on c8 will just fall. So king takes e7, rook takes c4, defending e4, and now rook takes c4, bishop takes c4, and now rook c8. So what just happened? Well, white just traded off the c4 pawn for the e7 pawn. And I gotta say that white somewhat has the advantage. Why? Because black has an IQP. 
meaning that white would have an easier time attacking that compared to black trying to attack white's weaknesses, which white doesn't really have many because black has three pawn islands and white only has two. So I would actually prefer white here, but this position is generally balanced. Bishop goes to d3, defending the e4 pawn, and now knight d7. And this position is generally considered equal. Now, instead of going rook a to b1, we're going to look at our final option that white can play, and that is f3. If f3 is played, then there's rook fc8, rook fc1, and now a6. Rook a b1, and you still give up the c4 pawn. It's a similar idea. After knight d5, queen d2, knight e7, all of this is the same, except here you do not play rook takes c4 and trade the pieces off. You actually play bishop takes c4, and after b5 is played by black, you go bishop to b3. Now after bishop b3 is played, you go knight d7, and after bishop g5 check, bishop f6 will be played. You take on f6 as white, and now after knight takes f6, it's a relatively equal position, uh, white should just hope to get a maximum control over the light squares, and black should just hope to try at least getting the knight to c5, where it would be very good, and it would be hard for white to really displace it. So, that is the end of the variation. So, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you have any suggestions or feedback for me, please let me know in the comment section, and stay tuned for more chess.